Pixel 8 Pro might be one of the most difficult smartphone cameras to evaluate. This is simply because, by design, the camera system on the Pixel and its entire appeal goes beyond how good the hardware is. Google seems to be selling the idea that no matter who you are, you can make a photo look however you want with a few clicks of their magic editing tools on the phone. This really had me asking, what counts as a real photo when you can do almost anything? Today we're going to look at how good the Pixel 8 Pro camera is overall compared to the iPhone and test the Pixel's video boost and night sight video and we will see if it's as good as Google claims in their marketing. As a teaser, I'm going to show you three sets of photos. Take note of which photo you prefer out of each set. Then later in the video, we're gonna go over which camera took which photo and you can compare which one you liked better. Let me say right off the bat that it's great that the Pixel 8 Pro finally has the option in the default camera app for you to control all your settings manually. This works in conjunction with Google's computational photography so that you get the best of both worlds, the ability to control exactly where you want your exposure and all the hardware and software tricks Google has developed over the years. That being said, personally, I didn't find myself having the desire to dive into the manual controls that often, even though I am someone who generally cares a lot about dialing in the perfect setting for a shot. I just don't have the time or patience for that unless my subject allows for it. In the case of snapping photos with my family just living everyday life, I'll let Google do the work for me. What I do welcome though, is that every camera, save the selfie camera on this phone, has been upgraded to 48 megapixels or higher. There is a pretty big downside to this though, that I will talk about later, but first let's look at some of the images. The default processing on JPEGs on the Pixel 8 Pro feels fairly consistent with previous models. Images are sharp with just enough contrast and they are not too saturated. Google seems to have nailed their auto white balance process because it was very consistent across the photos I've been taking in a wide variety of lighting situations, even when the lights in the shot were giving off a specific hue in their color cast. The Pixel managed to correct for it. This has pros and cons because I found myself disliking this approach of seemingly technical perfection about the Pixel images. The photos from the Pixel 8 Pro can feel like they lack life and even in a colorful scene, they can make the subject feel almost dull due to all the processing and lifting of shadows. This is much more noticeable when comparing images to a different device like the iPhone. Take this JPEG to start. The iPhone is warmer and has a green hue, whereas the Pixel is cooler and has a magenta hue. I find the look of the iPhone to be more inviting overall, but this is very subjective to your taste. There were absolutely instances where I'd take the Pixel image over the iPhone. This shot of a river feels like the iPhone completely missed the mark on white balance compared to the Pixel. I'd give a very slight edge in sharpness to the Pixel, but at least with JPEGs, the difference in detail is negligible. Additionally, on the topic of sharpness, when I compared the processed JPEGs to the raw images on the Pixel, I started to see starkly how much sharpening, clarity, and contrast Google adds in their processing because side by side, I'd say it's way too much in some photos. Out of curiosity, I also tested changing the photographic style on the iPhone to rich contrast, and I very consistently found that I preferred the iPhone image over the Pixel when shooting JPEGs in this mode. The colors felt more natural and the extra contrast added a level of richness that I preferred. This mode really lives up to its name, rich contrast. I want to be clear that I am not saying the iPhone images are better just because they felt more natural to me because again, how they look to you is subjective. If you'd like to judge some of the photos from this video yourself, I have left a link in the description for you to download some so you can see them in full quality. Moving on, the more I compared each phone's images, the more I wanted to know, how do these phones compare when you sidestep Google and Apple's default processing as much as possible and shoot in RAW? Firstly, the winner again in the sharpness and detail department is the Pixel. When you punch in, you start to see things like text and deep background details are much more defined on the Pixel compared to the iPhone. In full 50 megapixel RAW, when it comes to color, by default, we see these same trends slightly warmer iPhone images and cooler Pixel images with the odd exception. Like the iPhone's Pro Raw, it seems that Google has opted to still tone map Pixel Raw photos to give you what they deem as a better starting point. So even though these are raw DNG files, they aren't purely what is coming off the sensor. 
When you look at Pixel DNGs, they almost have an HDR glow to them. And this is definitely intentional on Google's part. Personally, I prefer Google's implementation here because iPhone Pro Raw images look over sharpened with too much clarity by comparison. When you throw on the exact same creative edit to both phones raw files, the color differences are pretty clear. One thing I found myself doing with the iPhone images is actually reducing the clarity and sharpness to be less intense. It makes the images feel more nuanced and less th like they were taken on a smartphone. Where I think the Pixel and the iPhone depart the most is in low light images. Shooting 50 megapixel night sight DNGs is awesome. And I think Google's computations really excel here. Shadow detail is slightly better on the Pixel, but I did find certain scenarios where noise is better managed on the iPhone. It's still really close. And if you don't like how the Pixel skews magenta, I can see many people preferring the iPhone. Both phones are very capable of great looking raw images and high resolution JPEGs. And I don't think you could go wrong with either. I think the biggest difference between these phones lies more in the software experience. The camera app in the Pixel is slow. 50 megapixel raw plus JPEG images take a few seconds to process. And if you shoot a lot back to back, you will inevitably miss shots compared to the iPhones, quicker processing and shutter time. This was something I experienced a lot with photos of my son. And yeah, you could say that taking 50 megapixel shots quickly is unnecessary, maybe even silly, but I prefer to be able to make that choice myself versus not having the option. If speed is deeply important to you between the two, the iPhone wins here. Remember at the beginning of the video when I showed these three sets of photos? With everything I just said in mind, here are the answers to which phone took which photos. Let me know in the comments which you preferred. Let's talk about the other side of the software experience that Google has built into the Pixel 8 Pro, the robust editing features. Let's start with best take, the feature that lets you take similar group shots and change the expressions of each person so that everyone looks good. I think this is the feature that I will personally end up using the most. In my testing, it works shockingly well, and I'm sure will become one of the most used features on the Pixel. The coolest part of it to me is the fact that if you have old group photos uploaded to Google Photos, you can still process them with Best Take, reviving photos from the past into the photo you wish you got. It's not perfect and it won't work on every single photo you try, but if you take frequent group photos, this will be very useful. The second big addition is the ability to select basically anything and remove it with generative AI in Google's magic editor. This colorful rainbow button on the corner of images in the photos app promises a lot on paper, but at this current time, I feel like the results are a mixed bag. It's possible to remove objects or people with convincing results, but if you look closely enough, most images can have some wonkiness. When you try removing objects that are very close to the edge of the photo, it can get a bit annoying to even select what you pr want properly on the phone itself. I only managed to get two images to be compatible with things like the AI sky replacement and the stylized option where you can take a photo and turn it into a painting or similar piece of art. It's not clear what kind of photos qualify for these extra options. This entire process feels a bit slow and requires that you back up every image to Google Photos that you want to generate into something new, which is understandable from a processing standpoint, but still a bit tedious if you are like me and you don't rely on cloud storage for your photo backup. I found this novel when playing around with it at first, but quickly found it kind of forgettable. For now, it feels like a party trick rather than something you'd seriously use to make your photos better. Honestly, overall, I'm a bit torn on these generative AI features because they do feel like they lack a level of authenticity. Part of the fun of photography, at least in my opinion, is the challenge of getting a great shot in camera. And when you can just fake a beautiful sunset, is it really still a fun experience or challenge? I am not sure, and I am not here to make a judgment on that. It's just an honest observation. Digital art mixed with photography isn't new, and plenty of people do this fantastical editing to their photos for a surreal feeling. This is the beginning of that kind of thing just getting easier for anyone to try. I think where the water gets muddy is when photos can be misrepresented as honest images that are completely false. But that is a deep AI discussion for a different video.
The standard video on the Pixel 8 Pro is what I would describe as status quo for a flagship device. All trends we have covered so far are present, good detail, slightly dull colors, very accurate white balance. It's not bad, but I don't think it's going to blow you away. Switching between cameras mid video isn't very graceful to watch. You really feel the delay in the image adjusting. The image stabilization, especially on the telephoto, can feel a bit too jerky for my liking. Even when I was trying to be as steady as possible during a pan, it felt like I was fighting the stabilization more than it was helping me a lot of the time. When comparing the standard Pixel video to the standard iPhone video, I'd still give Apple the win here. The colors feel richer overall and more accurate to real life. And then when you factor in the addition of ProRes Log on the iPhone, Apple has the leg up. Where things with the Pixel get slightly more interesting is with Google's Video Boost and Night Sight Video. Let's look at an example. This is what daytime Video Boost video looks like on my face. And while you assess what you think of the Video Boost, I'm going to pay some bills by telling you about today's sponsor, Dbrand. Dbrand is more than just a company that sells overpriced stickers. They are truly a movement of super intelligent robots that love to make quality products like their grip case, which I'm holding here. This one has a leather skin applied, which is my personal favorite. It's got MagSafe support even on the Pixel version of this case. And their latest drop, the X-Ray skin, is what I have here on the iPhone 15 Pro. Here's a close up so you can see what it looks like in Video Boost. And here's some B-roll of me walking with the iPhone 15 Pro shot on the Pixel 8 Pro with Video Boost. Let me know what you think of its performance and the stabilization in the comments down below. Check out all the other devices Dbrand is offering with their X-Ray Drop at the first link in the video description. Now let's look at some more comparisons with the iPhone. Video boost during the daytime does give slightly more dimension compared to the standard Pixel video. You get richer looking colors and better overall detail in the shadows. But where video boost really shines is in low light. Across the board, Video Boost is a very significant improvement to the standard video that the Pixel can produce. When compared to the iPhone, I think Pixel Video with Video Boost wins in certain situations. In shots like this one of a clock at nighttime, you really start to see the value of going through the Video Boost process. However, from a professional standpoint, I still think the iPhone's video is a lot more versatile. Apple Log has more room for finessing, and I'd argue that the Video Boosted Pixel can look over sharpened for my liking. It's amazing that the Pixel Lite Pro can take video of this quality, but it still feels like it's coming from a phone. Whereas I think the iPhone can punch above its class in the right hands. Google also has a clear financial incentive to sell you more cloud storage by letting you process these large 4K files that live up in your Google photo storage. The more you use this feature, the more likely you'll be reliant on Google Drive storage overall. I also wish that in video boost mode, you weren't capped at 30 FPS without even being able to shoot in 24 FPS. It would have been nice if they allowed both modes. Google has clearly worked very hard to deliver the absolute best image they are capable of in the Pixel 8 Pro camera system. But I think that's also in a way its biggest weakness. Between the slow processing of the shutter when taking photos and the long processing in the cloud with video boost, you will need to be more intentional and patient using these processing heavy features. In summary, I think the Pixel 8 Pro delivers great results. On the photography side, photos look sharp with good contrast, clean looking colors, if not a little dull at times, and great low light performance thanks to night sight. Video is great during the daytime, low light video in standard mode suffers a lot compared to the iPhone, but Video Boost does make up for that if you are willing to go through the process. Where I'd love to see Google improve is in translating the colors that I'm seeing in real life to its photos and videos. From a color standpoint, I think the iPhone delivers a more aesthetically inviting image despite losing in certain technical aspects to the Pixel. I say this as someone who has never daily driven an iPhone. I've always been an Android user, but I can't argue on a personal level, I prefer what I see from the iPhone this year. What do you think? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, you will probably enjoy my video on the special use case of Apple Log that I think you should try. Check it out.